Hello, my name is Alex Alexander and I am an environmental educator and an agent for change. I usually like to work in nature and tell people about the beautiful world that we live in. Places like our amazing jungles filled with so many animals. Borneo is home to hundreds of endemic flora and fauna, which means that these plants, birds and animals can only be found here. We're certainly very lucky indeed. One of the things that I like to do when I visit these places is to breathe in the fresh air and be thankful for the place we call home. But sometimes that fresh air doesn't seem so fresh, even in the jungle, which is what I'm going to talk to you today about. We all deserve to breathe in clean air. If we don't, the effect on our health is enormous. Air pollution is quite simply a silent killer that can affect everyone's health but especially children's health. For more information about the effects of air pollution and what causes it, please take a look at the video Trish and Trash meet Dr. Justin Sentian in Antarctica. Dr. Justin is an atmospheric scientist from UMS, University Malaysia Sabah, and he told Trish and Trash about the ways we can help with reducing air pollution. He also told them that one of the ways that we can empower ourselves is to become citizen scientists and to measure the air quality around us. Today, I am going to show you a simple experiment that will allow us to measure air quality in different locations around your school or home by using petroleum jelly to catch particulate matter from the air. Particulate matter is made up of particles or tiny pieces of solids or liquids that are in the air. These particles may include dust, dirt, soot, smoke, or drops of liquid. Some particles are big enough or they appear dark enough to see. For example, you can often see smoke in the air. Others are so small that you can't see them in the air. Today, we will use a magnifying glass to observe and measure the amount of air particulate matter collected over five days from each location. Now, before you begin this experiment, I would like you to ask yourself a couple of questions. First, based on what you know about your home and neighborhood, which types of particles do you expect to find in the air that you breathe? Dust? Dirt, soot, smoke, drops of liquid, or anything else? Second, which location in your experiment do you think will have the highest average number of particles per square? Now that we have written the answers to the above questions, let me show you what we need for this experiment. The experiment materials that you will need are three index cards, graph paper, glue, petroleum jelly, butter knife, string, magnifying glass, calculator, permanent marker, pencil, and tape. Step one, take your graph paper and cut it so that you have 10 by 10 squares. They must all be an equal size and fit the index card. If your squares are large and a 10 by 10 grid will not fit on your index card, you may need to use an area of five by five squares instead. If you do not have graph paper, then use a pencil and ruler and carefully draw a grid on each index card. It is important that the size of the grid on each card is the same so that you can compare the results later. Step two, glue your grids onto the index cards, one grid per card. I have made these index cards earlier. Step three, write a number and location on each index card. You also might want to write science experiment in progress, please do not touch on the index card so no one disturbs them. Step four, spread an even layer of petroleum jelly and cover the entire area of the grid using the knife. I have a blunt knife so that I don't accidentally cut myself. Step five, take a piece of string to each index card. Step six, hang the index cards from different locations in and around your home. You might wanna ask an adult for help with this if you plan to hang a card somewhere high like a tree branch. 
Step 7. Now, you must wait for 5 days for particles to settle on the petroleum jelly. Every day check the weather. If it is going to rain, you may need to end your experiment early, so the cards do not get wet. As long as the cards hang for at least 24 hours, the experiment should still work, but 5 days is best. Step 8. While you are waiting for the index cards to collect the particulate matter, you can create a table for each index card to record your results. The tables should have the same number of squares as the grid on the index cards. You can either draw this in a book or do this on your computer. Step 9. Once the 5 days or 24 hours is finished, collect the cards and use a magnifying glass to count the number of particles found within each square on each index card. Record your results in the squares of your data tables. Step 10. Now for a bit of maths. For every index card, calculate the average number of particles found in each square. To do this, add up the total number of particles found on the card and divide by the number of squares. So for example, if you did a grid of 5 by 5 squares, you will divide by 25. I created cards 5 days ago and have some cards to count. In conclusion, I would have thought that the outside location tests would have more particles than the living room location, so I will need to check to see if there were activities that may have contributed to more particles inside the living room, such as a rug being shaken. I will also redo this experiment and test whether the results stay the same. What about your experiment? What is your conclusion? Which location had the poorest air quality or the location with the most particles? Is this what you expected? If not, can you think of any reason why the air quality was lower in that location? You may need to do some investigating here. If there are a lot of particles from a room inside of your home, ask an adult if the air filters in the house have been changed recently. If you found that the air quality outside of your home was low, check to see if there are a lot of flowers and trees that produce pollen. Also, research the internet to find if there are any factories or power plants nearby. Do you live in a city? Are there a lot of cars driving on your street every day that could explain the high amount of particles you saw? There are many tiny particles in the air that we breathe. Some of them occur naturally, such as pollen, dust, hair and dirt while others come from anthropogenic activity or human activity, from sources such as industrial factories, power plants, and cars. If we all choose to use more clean sources of energy and transportation, such as walking as much as possible, then we will have cleaner air to breathe. Instead of using energy from natural gas and coal, which emit pollutants, people can use solar, wind, which are considered clean energy sources. Here is an extension you might want to do. Use more than three index cards and compare locations outside your home. Compare the air quality at school with the air quality at home, for instance. Another option is to do the experiment a number of times to make sure your results are accurate. Scientists will often repeat experiments several times and check if they get the same results. It would be interesting to make this a long-term experiment. So repeat at different times of the year and see what happens to the air quality around you. What happens when the air is very hazy, for instance? So, now that we know more about how to measure air quality using this experiment, we can become more aware of the air pollution that surrounds us. However, there are some particulate matter, or PM, that we cannot see with our small magnifying glasses. To measure this PM, we will need to use a clever air quality monitoring machine and learn how to read the air quality levels. To find out more about how to do this, take a look at the video featuring the Kinabalu coders. 
They will teach us not only how to read air quality, but also how to build an air quality monitoring machine. Thank you, fellow citizen scientists. I hope you have enjoyed our science experiment today about air quality monitoring. See you next time.